beverages and joining us now to talk about them is Melissa Armel, founder and owner of The Stock Swoosh. So, Melissa, first up, what are your biggest takeaways from today's session as stocks, they close a bit lower? They definitely had a sell-off today, and I'm really not surprised because what is surprising is how much we rallied in 2021 without having this type of sell-off. Because, again, if you look at the economy and you look at the way markets acted last year, we say, how could we continue to make all the new highs we did when we don't have everyone back at work, but we have high levels of inflation, when we're going into an environment where rates will increase this year in 2022. So the market started to be more concerned about that. And of course, every new COVID variant, the market gets very concerned. So I'm not surprised by the sell-off today. And I viewers need to know that we may be gapping down tomorrow morning lower even still. We may reverse tomorrow on a big gap down, but we, we could sell off. Like we're gonna keep selling off right now, even though we closed tonight in the post market, we're gonna keep someone up. This is a big sell off that's happening right now in the market. All right, and as Kristen mentioned before, the Fed minutes playing a role in today's movement, 10 year treasury yield rising, the S&P falling following the news. So what do you think spooked investors? Well, they were discussing some of these policies that they were gonna change for 2022. Again, pulling back in buying securities and also rising rates. I think what, is, what the concern is is that the Fed is trying to do this to, to prevent higher levels of inflation. I don't think they're going to be right about that. So now what came out today was they're really going to stop buying all these treasuries, pull back faster than anticipated. In other words, they're, they're, they're supposedly going to be done with it by March, which is a lot quicker than the market thought. And again, that combined with the interest rate increase, I think spooked the market today. But more importantly, I don't think that Jerome Powell, the Fed chair, I don't think that he really has a grasp on why we're seeing high levels of inflation. And I don't think rising or increasing interest rates is going to help the inflation. In fact, I think it's going to make it worse for consumers because if their interest rates are higher for things that they're paying, like credit cards, cars, and mortgages, it's going to cost people more, just like they're paying more for goods and services. Here's my take on it. Last year, remember a year ago, Jerome Powell said he thought inflation was temporary. He was absolutely incorrect. He admitted that then towards the end of the year. He said, obviously, now it isn't, it isn't temporary. It's been going on a year. Now, in December, he said that he thought that this they'd be back to normal in 12 months at a 2% level of inflation by the end of 2022. He's thinking that everything's going to go back to normal within a year's time. That could be true if all the steps the Fed is taking to actually fix inflation. But the problem is that I don't think it does because the reason we're having higher prices is we don't have enough people working. We don't have enough people working. Part of it is what? People are scared to go back to work because of COVID. People are choosing not to work because of the mandates and they're getting fired then. So we have all these problems right now. So if you go to the store and you buy something or, or you want to buy something or order it, furniture, whatever you want to get, it takes so long to manufacture it. It takes so long to get it delivered to you because we don't have the workers. We need people to go back to work. That is a huge problem right now. And until that gets fixed, I don't think we're going to see inflation levels go back to normal. So he either doesn't have a grasp on what's causing the inflation or he's being overly optimistic like he was in 2021 or he's being partisan because he kept his job as a Fed chair. I don't know what the case is, but I find it, I find it actually shocking that he doesn't understand what's happening. But a lot of these people... They fly at 30,000 feet. They're not going to the grocery store. They are not buying things online. They are not filling up their gas tank every day. They don't understand really what's happening. If you're a consumer, you understand what's happening. You call right now to do anything on the phone, run a little for four hours. Why? People aren't working. They don't have enough people answering the calls, whatever you want to do. I have another Fed question for you. Last month, the Fed saying we could see up to three interest rate hikes in 2022. So do you anticipate similar market movement at those times or are investors already pricing this in? And please don't hold back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Well, as far as the interest rates go, again, they're doing that because they don't want to see heightened levels of inflation. But I think it's going to be a, a pressure on the consumer because if you have a credit card balance your interest rate is going to go up because it's tied to prime when prime increases and again who makes out in the end then when rates go up the banks make out we've seen rallies in the bank now of course the banks sold off today as well but the banks in the last week have had some really nice rallies so ultimately the consumer always bears the brunt of these problems when interest rates go up 
when you have higher cost of goods and services. And already, already we've seen them say things like, oh, well, we've only seen food increase, you know, five, 10%. I've seen some food prices go up 50%. So, I mean, as far as having interest rates go up, again, it's going to infect the everyday person who wants to borrow money. And even if it's something like a credit card, even if, though it's not a big purchase like a car or a house, I think it really will affect people's bottom line. So then how do people pay for those things? Either they're going to spend less or they're going to not travel as much, not spend as much on gas, or they're, people are going to have to find part-time jobs or other ways to make income, have income coming in. All the stimulus that the government put out is not going to support the cost of what we're having and seeing with the rising inflation. And especially combined with higher interest rates, I think that's, that's not going to be a good thing. It's not going to be a good thing for the markets, and it's not going to be a good thing for everyday consumers. So the market has notched new record highs over the last past month and during the spread of Omicron, mind you. So do you think <laughs> that investors will eventually react to the virus more strongly, or do you think they're just going to live with it and continue? Well, again, 2021, the market made so many new highs, and we were still involved with different aspects of COVID. We had the Delta variant. Now we have the Omicron. I think right now they're predicting that we will be out of this Omicron by the end of January. Is that going to be right? I don't know. I think that all of the so-called medical experts have been wrong at every step along the way about this ever since we started this in March of 2020. So I have no faith that they are gonna be right, that this is gonna be over by the end of January. And the market has a, a, a had negative reactions to COVID. While they have been temporary and their markets rallied back in 2020, 2021, and even again this year, the, the fact is that if God forbid we had another shutdown, and I always say 50, 50 chance that could happen, that would be bad for markets. You've seen some school shut down. You've seen some temporary closures where offices and businesses, like even in here in New York City, they've said, don't come into work. Don't come into work right now because the cases are up. Again, these are like temporary shutdowns. If we had a big federal shutdown or some kind of massive shutdown, that would absolutely be affected by markets and markets would sell off. The good thing is that people are up. If you've had money invested in the market and 401ks, even today with the selling, this is profit taking. People are just taking profits because we had such a big rally. You need to know if you are a person that's invested in the market, what your time horizon is. Because if you don't want to end up getting out one morning and have given away 50% or more of your profits, think about what you're doing. Decide at the right point where you want to get in and you want to get out because it's very important so you don't make a rash decision whether selling or buying at a wrong placement. Well, um, that brings me to my next question. You, you believe that the market will have a large sell-off at some point in 2022. So why is that and how long do you think it would take to bounce back? The market overall, I believe, holds the uptrend in 2022. That's my outlook for the year. That okay. doesn't mean we're not having a big sell-off. And I don't look at sell-offs as far as 10%, 20% for corrections. We have had such a big rally that the market would have to have such a massive, massive sell-off that I think it's impossible to happen unless we had some kind of war with Russia or Ukraine, which could happen. That could happen to affect the markets negatively. But the fact is, I don't think we break the uptrend. Could we have a sell-off? Yes, we could have more of a sell-off tomorrow. Tomorrow, just after today, and that will look ugly, really, really ugly. We could fall all the way down to the 200 period moving average. For those of you that follow technicals in the charts and the cues and the spy, we could fall all the way down there, and that would be a 25, 30 point move in within a 24, 48 hour period. But the fact is that people love to buy dips, and the market is strong, and it's in an uptrend. So whatever selling happens, I think is short-lived. Similar to March, remember March of 2020, we had a big sell-off. Market got bought and never looked back. We've never seen those lows since March 20. We've never been anywhere near those lows. So I'd say don't, you know, don't think this is the end of the world if we have a sell-off. Markets go up, markets go down. But I think the one thing people need to be aware of, and Kristen said this earlier, we are going to see volatility in 2022. It's similar to what we saw in 2020 more so because in 2021, we really didn't have a lot of volatility in the market. The market really was just very bullish. And you could have traded and you could have invested money in weak stocks and strong stocks and everything you could have bought and still made money without having any idea what to do. You have to know what you're doing this year. So it's a little bit different. But to be honest with you, I think people should know what they're doing all the time, whether they make trading decisions on their own or they consult with an investment advisor. Now, which industries and sectors are you most bullish on this year? I'm very bullish in Apple. That's very strong. It fell today a little tiny bit, but it's still really close to the highs. We have earnings season coming up in two weeks. Netflix reports the third week of January, and that has had a sell-off too, but eventually that stock will recover. And again, the winter time, people like to rent videos. And again, if we have another partial shutdown, people will always go on board with the Netflix. So I like those two stocks. And of course, I like Tesla. That was near the highs 
also on Monday, and again, only fell because of the market in the last two days too. So there's, you have the auto industry that is just rallying like crazy, like hotcakes because people can't, again, they can't, don't have enough workers or enough parts to buy the cars. People are spending like more than 40% on used cars. So some of these automakers have had huge rallies too. What I do not like is some of the other stocks like the airlines, the cruise lines, the things that, that have been negatively affected by COVID that could still be more negatively affected by COVID, particularly if they wanna do mandates, which they've been talking about, about having vaccine mandates for air travel in the continental US, that would really negatively affect airlines. So I'm bearish on airlines and travel industry and I'm bullish on tech stocks like Apple, for example. All right, Melissa Armel, founder and owner of the Stock Swoosh. Melissa, thank you so much for spending your time and sharing your expertise. I appreciate it.